Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raghi Omar. Every nation has its own unique holiday reflecting national heritage and culture. Often these holidays mark important religious or historical events as well. In the United States, that special day is Thanksgiving, a day celebrating the facts and legends surrounding the arrival of the first European settlers. Through the years, though, two of the key elements of Thanksgiving have remained constant, family and food. For many, it's also a celebration of immigrants coming to the United States, with each new culture adapting an American tradition to suit their own customs and tastes. This diversity can perhaps best be seen on the nation's grocery store shelves, as everyone shops for the big feast. Directors Cameron Hickey and Lauren Feeney bring us a unique take on the Thanksgiving tale with a glimpse into their local supermarket, a Palestinian-American family-run business called Cousins. Our city, Philadelphia, is the birthplace of the United States. It was here that the founding ideals of equality and liberty for all people were written into our Declaration of Independence and Constitution. But that great historical legacy is no longer what distinguishes this city. Today, Philadelphia is ranked as the poorest and most dangerous of America's big cities. Our neighborhood, Kensington, is one of the most troubled sections. Kensington was once the textile capital of the country. But as industries left American cities in search of more space and cheaper labor, neighborhoods like Kensington were all but abandoned. Old buildings began to crumble, and weeds grew in vacant lots. Recently, new immigrants have begun to fill the void. A walk to the local supermarket takes us past a Mexican restaurant, a bar frequented by Puerto Ricans, and a mosque attended by immigrants from the Middle East and North Africa. In poor inner city communities like Kensington, one of the biggest problems residents face is lack of access to good food that's affordable. Most shopkeepers avoid the difficult task of serving such a community. But in Kensington, there's cousins. Adib Ibrahim is the manager here. He says that the only way for a family-run business to survive is to serve the local community in ways that big corporate stores can't. Being that you're an independent supermarket, you need to know what the needs of the community are. You have to know your customers, know what they're looking for. You have to, you know, relate to them. Adib can relate to the people of Kensington because his family has lived here since they left Palestine more than 40 years ago. We always say, we always joke to this day, Dad, why did you come to this area? But now, we love the area. It's home for me. Adib's father moved to Philadelphia from a small village outside of Jerusalem in the 1950s, and much of the extended family followed. In the 1970s, it was Adib's uncle who opened Cousin's Grocery Store. Today is the day before Thanksgiving, the American holiday that marks the harvest. It's a national tradition that is celebrated with an enormous feast. One of the busiest places to be found on the day before the holiday is the neighborhood supermarket. For immigrants, celebrating Thanksgiving is one of the rituals that gives them a sense of belonging in their new country. The people at Cousin's Supermarket come from all over the world, but today everyone is here shopping for ingredients for a Thanksgiving feast. Este, bueno, el pavo regularmente pues lo hacemos este al horno y este ensalada de papa, arroz con gandule, que es la comida típica de nuestro país. Because of the diversity of the customers and the staff, Adib and his cousins have learned to move fluently between English, Arabic, and Spanish. Israel is one of the many cousins' employees who immigrated from Mexico. In Mexico, I worked in a taller de maquiladoras, in a corte de confección, where they make pantalones, shirts, everything. Since I came to Mexico, I was working here. I came to work here in the supermarket. Estamos muy contentos por mí, por mi parte estoy contento con ellos porque yo soy que necesito el trabajo siempre. Miriam immigrated from Morocco with the hope of someday attending an American university. For now, she works in Cousin's Bakery while she perfects her English and even learns a little Spanish. I got a good friend, she worked with me, she speaks Spanish, you know. And I start to learn a little bit Spanish, you know, like how much and this cake or how much to bread and like a little bit. Dora is a cartoon for girls. She speak two languages, Spanish and English. For girls, we like a lot of Dora. They like Dora too much. 
Adib has made it his business to understand the Kensington community and what they want. The store carries everything from Jamaican chutney to fresh Oaxacan cheese to tin cans of hummus imported from Lebanon. But at Thanksgiving, there are some American standards that he stocks up on as well. We sell collard greens here, like, obviously all year round, but I would say most of the holidays we'll put a price that we're losing money on the item. But we try to give back a little bit, you know, to each of the different people that shop here. So we'll, we'll advertise them four pounds for a dollar or five pounds for a dollar. You're not making any money at that price. We're taking a loss on it, but it brings customers in. They're happy. It's a good time of the year. Collard greens are a traditional soul food dish that African-American families brought with them when they migrated to Philadelphia from the American South. But no two families prepare them in the same way. Smoked neck bones, onions, potatoes, a lot of stick of butter. I like pork, I don't like turkey in there. No hot sauce, because I like mine to be kind of spicy. My family a little different. We like them a little sweet, so we put a little sugar in there with green peppers, red peppers. Lemon pepper, I use crushed hot peppers, garlic, paprika, and a little bit of turkey meat. Black pepper, MSG, sugar, and cooking oil. Sometimes when I talk to my father in the phone, he told me, you need something I said, I say, you know what, don't worry about it. Everything, thanks God, is here. Like pita bread, like cheese, olive oil, couscous, sardine. There's a lot of different stuff I find it here. You know, if it means traveling to Dominican Republic or traveling to Puerto Rico or traveling to find the source of the food that you're looking for and then bring it in at a reasonable price, you know, we do that. Over the years, we've noticed, like, the Mexican population growing, so we added more and more and more items for them. A few years ago, Cousins became the first and remains the only halal supermarket in the city. Halal is the Islamic way of slaughtering an animal. It would be equivalent to like a kosher for the Jewish community. Muslims in America, they're demanding more and more halal products. It was experimental at first to see what, you know, how that was gonna work out because it is a big major change in the way you do business in the store because you cannot mix any of the different types of feeds together. Selling halal meat in this part of the city is important not only for Arab Americans, but also for the large and growing population of African American Muslims. Robert Rollerson shops at Cousins every week. Some supermarkets will uh, mix the meats up. You know what I mean? They were basically like, cut like the pork chops and stuff that we don't you know, eat pork. So they would like cut the pork chops and with the same like they would cut the pork chops with, they would cut the beef ribs or whatever we eat. So we try to like go where we would really have 100%, be 100% sure that they won't do that. For observant Muslims, pork is forbidden. But for immigrants from Latin America, pork is a basic essential. Cousins had to find a way to serve these two groups that live side by side here in Kensington. So the owners invited a local pig farmer to open a separate business in one corner of the store. Here, people who do eat pork can find it in any form imaginable. We handle all of the pork products within the supermarket. So, so, so Cousins has no pork uh, per se in the supermarket. It's a very unique situation. Worship in Jesus, but some stuff never set with me. I'm not knocking nobody's religion, but the difference between the Muslims and other religions is we go, we try to go straight to God. Do I consider myself as a Muslim or American? Well, it's like self-explanatory. We, we are American, but we just have different beliefs. You know, some people think that uh, all the Muslims are the same. All Muslims are not the same. You have extremists, and then you have people that try to try to implement the right religion. I think uh, we felt a lot of racism uh, after 9-11. Uh, you know, although I am, you know, American-born and, you know, raised in this country, I think I'm just as American as everybody else. After 9-11, the, the, the customers are very supportive. The, the entire neighborhood is very supportive. They know us for 35 years. There is some extreme Muslims that paint a bad picture for everybody, that's true. I mean, that's not who we are. We just want to live a normal life, just like everybody else, send your kids to school. For some other Middle Eastern people, it could be the quality of life here is much better for them, and that's why they're here. And that's why most immigrants want to come to this country, is to have a better life for your children.
To prepare for the big holiday feast, Adib has stocked the store with specialties for every cultural taste. Just checking on some key items for the holiday. Make sure they're in stock. He quickly discovers one item that is in short supply. Yellow cheddar is a key ingredient in another holiday essential. For many American families, the meal wouldn't be complete without baked macaroni and cheese. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out of stock actually. Let me, uh, let me look at the market today. Let me see market prices. That's the barrel. We uh, underestimated how much cheese we're gonna use. And uh, obviously today's the day before Thanksgiving, there's no more time. So uh, he's off for the day and uh, he's doing me a favor. When we come back, the big day is approaching and the demand for everyone's unique dinner table item is mounting. Can cousins keep up?